fetal feces known as meconium has been passed by the calf ahead of birth, a sign it's in distress and must be delivered as soon as possible. Come on. Come on, little Though Amanda's saved the calf, it's not out of the woods yet. I would say she's taking her first steps, but I don't know. <laughs> As premature cows often need to be hand-reared if they're to survive. Come on. Luckily, there are plenty of midwives who want to attend the mum and her new arrival. It's not sucking off its mother at all, so it's totally and utterly reliant on us feeding it. Does it just, like, need to learn to suck? It hasn't got a very good suck reflex, I think because it was premature. So when it was first born, it couldn't get up, it couldn't suckle. So, in a way, we are almost kind of going against nature by helping it along. I don't know what's going to happen with it, we just have to do as best. We can get this suck reflex going. There is a chance that we can get it feeding off its mother, which would, which would always be better than bottle feeding it, because obviously, if it's reliant on us, we have to feed it every day, whereas if it goes back onto the cow, it can have nice warm milk whenever yeah. it wants. The mother needs to be milked several times a day to keep the calf well fed. So Amanda's training up a team of milkmaids. Clemmy has just become rather good at milking, haven't you? You have to have lots of lessons. You have to have lots of lessons, yeah. Or you have to just milk lots of cows, yeah. don't you? So the best thing is to lean right into her so if she shuffles about, you can move quickly out of rut so you don't get trodden on, OK? You have to just give her a little stroke. You do have to then, give her a little stroke. And then she might just calm down. That's it. That's it, Clemmy. Four-year-old Clem hasn't started school yet. Right, do you have a go? So has spent lots of time shadowing Amanda and perfecting her milking technique. Clemmy's actually worth her weight in gold. She's really into coming out and... Um, and getting on and helping out. She likes to be doing something. It gives her a sense of worth, I think. Where does the milk come from? The tit or the udder? Uh, hudder. Hudder. <laughs> <laughs> the hudder? hudder? Look how well she's doing. It's very really hard getting milk off a cow. It is very hard getting milk off a cow, but you're doing a very good job. With such a refreshing drink on tap, Milkmaid Clem has got used to the perks of the job. Milk, yes. And it was lovely. It is lovely. It tastes really nice and creamy. Yeah, creamy like, it tastes like creamy, creamy milk. It does. All topped up, the calf's happy. And the girls have even christened their new friend. What's your calf called? Kit, Kit Kat. Kat. <laughs> when dusk falls, the temperature drops, and Amanda's worried about the underweight newborn. Up we get. As Kit Kat is too weak to stay in the barn, Amanda has the perfect place to keep her toasty warm. A calf on the half. Is it too cold for a cow to go out into its mother? Yes, it is. It's going to be below freezing tonight. So she's got a little jacket on, but it's just better if we can keep her a little bit warm. She likes me. She does like you. She likes you and sleep on me. She's still not a very well calf. She's not very strong. She's not as strong as the other calves, is she? Like this. Exactly like that. She's not as strong as the other calf, so there still is a chance, 50-50, that she might not make it die. We have to look after her somewhere and give her lots of food. But that you can only do your best, can't you? You can only do your best, and you can't win them all. Sometimes something dies, doesn't it? Yeah. That's all. Yeah? So I'll look after her so well. OK. You look after her so well. Good lass. The children of bottle-fed Kit Kat around the clock. But Amanda knows the best chance the beloved calf has of becoming a healthy member of the herd is to learn how to fend for itself. She's not sucking. And now watch. See this? Yeah. See, she's fighting it, but look. I'm squirting a bit of milk in her mouth now. Mm, why are you trying to make it suck it? If we can make her get her own milk, it's better for her, isn't it? Now, look, look. 
Can you hear a sucking noise? Yeah. What do you think, Clem? It's like... <laughs> oh, good, Kit That's really, really good, isn't it? But if you look there, I'm not even holding her now. She's doing it herself. I think she likes it. She will. That's how she's supposed to feed. She's not supposed to feed off a bottle. Look. Yay! That is so good, Kit Kat. Can I suck her? Yeah, of course you can. I've got a Kit Kat. Clemmie, you know, that means that you're, you've done such a good job to get her to this stage. Thanks to four-year-old Clemmie's kind care, Kit Kat the calf is on the road to recovery. It did look at one stage like maybe there was something actually physically wrong with her rather than her just being premature. No. But time seems to be remedying it. Clem's been milking the cow, she's been feeding her, hands on. And I mean, at the moment, all the signs are looking positive. We've really made great strides today with her suckling um, off the cow herself, so that's absolutely brilliant. Thanks, Clem. The family spent all December hand-rearing their premature calf. Is that enough, Mummy? Push it down, see what you think. Bit more. But in the cow shed, Amanda's made a shocking discovery. Kit Kat, the calf, died. I came out here one morning and I found it dead. I really thought that it had turned the corner. The conversations never come up with Clementine, with Clem, um, so she doesn't know that Kit Kat's dead. Growing up on the farm, the children aren't shielded from the realities of life and death. But as Clemmy devoted so much time caring for Kit Kat, Amanda's making a rare exception for her second youngest, who may be wise for her years, but is still only four years old. She looked after the calf and she did a good job. And I don't particularly want her to sort of feel like um, she failed. If it had been Edith and Violet, I would have told them that it had died. I'd probably have told them right there that morning that it had died. And yeah, I could say, yeah, it's dead. And I don't know what a reaction would be, but I just don't particularly want to sort of say that, that after all that effort, um, it didn't make it. So I know I always say that you've got to accept that sometimes you don't win, but I don't know whether in this case she does need to know that. As far as, as, far as she's concerned, she did a really good job. And, and um, she um, and Kit Kat lives on. But sparing Clem from heartache is easier said than done. You know that noisy one? Which noisy one? That noisy cat one we were making the tea. Yeah, it died, that one. Yeah. It did die, but that one. But Kit Kat was, didn't die. He was a good one. Yeah, he was a good one. He just lied in, he just lied in a cuddly bed. He didn't make any sound. And we fed him milk. Yeah, yep. he did really well. Though Clem's been protected from the sad news, it's affected Amanda more than expected. So I spend a lot of time saying to the children, you know, don't get too attached, um, because at the end of the day, they're farm animals, and you get to see their whole life cycle. You see them born, you look after them, and um, you also see them come to the end of their lives as well. So, you know, and I did warn her with Kit Kat that there was always a chance it might die, but it's me that's upset. That's not a very good lesson, is it? But that doesn't mean that... that it doesn't um, upset you when you lose one. So, there you go. Shouldn't have got so attached to it. With a herd of growing calves to distract Clemmy, and plenty of work to do, as always. Life on Ravenseat Farm goes on.